Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Had to do a little maintenance and some few small repairs on the 2500 HD. Uh, battery was a little weak, so I put a new one in, as you can see here. Uh, then also I'm gonna do a time lapse here of doing a new water pump, uh, pulleys, radiator hoses, and a new radiator, as I had a weepy radiator and found out that I also had a leaking water pump. Hope you enjoy. So I'd originally updated this video to YouTube with some background music playing, but come to find out it is not uh, royalty-free music built into the iMovie app. So I took the video down and I'm going to go through here and uh, voice over all of this. Uh, taking this apart is pretty simple. Take your intake loose, upper part of the air box. The uh, radiator shroud is two-piece, so take the fasteners apart, uh, pull the top and the bottom out. Uh, have a an old no-name wrench that I've ground out to fit these uh, clutch fans. Uh, take that loose and then uh, drain the system which uh, I'll tell you about here right here in just a sec. So because I was going to replace the hoses anyway I just went ahead and punched a hole in a lower radiator hose at an angle so that it would drip down over the frame and down into this big tote with all sides that you can everywhere. Since the GM radiator from the factory doesn't have a drain plug, you either have to just pull that hose off and make a mess, or like I said, since I'm replacing the hoses, I just cut a hole in them. Once I got the coolant drained, uh, I had to get the power steering and uh, transmission cooler lines removed. Uh, standard GM push lock style connectors or whatever they call them has a little uh, e-clip in there you pop out with a right angle pick and then the line just pulls out with a little bit of uh, force uh, you will drip a little bit of transmission and power steering fluid but not enough that it really matters you can top it all off when you're done and then pull the radiator out uh, unhook all the hoses uh, from the water pump and then it's a matter of start pulling the uh, front end of the engine apart So at this point, I'm uh, to the part of taking air off the front of the engine. Uh, the little impact does a great job of pulling the bolts out of the water pump. I use just a regular flat razor blade scraper to uh, clean those gasket surfaces. This iron block engine is not real bad to mess with. I did put a new tensioner and idler pulley on. Uh, again, very straightforward, just taking the old parts off, knock the pulley off of there, put the new pulley on, uh, tighten the bolt down, little blue thread locker, make sure everything stays together. And then I realized I had picked up the wrong thermostat for the truck, so I went back to the parts store, got the right one, uh, then took the water pump out, made sure I had all the bolts good and clean, threads were cleared out, uh, they were in good shape. And you'll notice that I put here, I put the bolts through the front end of the water pump so that it'll hold the gaskets in place as I place it on the front of the engine, and then uh, just go through and crisscross, tighten them down. Yeah, I know most people are going to say, oh, you should have torqued that down, but uh, I've done it this way multiple times and I've never had an issue. Don't go crazy with the little impact or your ratchet or whatever, and you should be fine. Uh, put the other pulley back on, again, with some more blue thread locker to keep it from vibrating apart, uh, hooking up the heater hoses and so on. Then it was on to putting the radiator in. Uh, got it in, bolted down, and realized I did not put the bushings in the bottom of it, so the radiator was going to flop around and break pull it back out, install the bushings, put it back in. And now we're starting to get into the home stretch of the reassembly, uh, basically putting everything back together, getting the fan shroud put back in, radiator hoses connected, all the clamps put on, make sure everything is in the right orientation so they don't rub or get entangled with each other. Uh, putting the serpentine belt on, uh, I did go with the gates green back on it. Um, I just like the idea of it having a higher temperature rating and the being the HD version since it is an HD truck. Probably not a big deal in my particular usage, but I like it and wasn't that many more dollars. So I got the lower radiator shroud put in here. Uh, you can see I put a little dab of blue thread locker on the clutch fan threads. And I started putting coolant in through the upper radiator uh, hose inlet on the water pump. I like to do that as much as I can, get the block as full as I can, let the air uh, vent out as it just settles in naturally, uh, get the upper radiator shroud put in, all the fasteners there, upper radiator hose, 
and then uh, we'll go through with the uh, intake and everything and then it's just a matter of running the vehicle up get it up to operating temperature getting the air pockets out and making sure we top off the coolant to the proper level and in the middle of all this i ran across a really good deal on a steering wheel that was in a whole lot better shape than what i had this one was wrapped in red white and blue paracord that generally was just dingy and gross looking so I uh, pulled the airbag out, uh, took the center nut off the steering wheel, give it a couple wraps on the side, it'll shake loose, pull it out, swap the new wheel back on, and then put the airbag on. Uh, of course, doing this all with the battery disconnected so I don't uh, accidentally set off an airbag. Uh, it helps if you actually put the correct airbag on so that it matches the plugs on the truck. My 2500 HD's got 194,000 and some odd miles on it. So I'm going to show you how I uh, swapped out the shocks on this truck and the steering stabilizer. So it's pretty straightforward what we're trying to do here. I'm going to take out the old rusted out junkers and put in these nice new Bilstein 5100s. As you saw, I already took out the, uh, the old ones. Pretty easy. You can do this without having to jack up the truck. I just ran it up on the ramps. Take out the bolts out of your lower and upper mounts that are up there. It's a 21 millimeter on both ends. Don't forget your safety squints or your uh, eye protection as all the crud and mud and rust and junk will fall down all in your face. Ears, nose, whatever, keep your mouth closed. So take the old ones out and then uh, it's a little bit of a challenge to put the new ones in as they're uh, a little harder to compress. But I usually just put the top one in, set the bolt and then I can push up on the bottom and I'll show you how I did that. So in the front, you've got your, of course, your torsion bar suspension. You've got a nut at the top you have to take off, and these are probably all rusted and corroded. I may wind up just cutting these off, but I'm going to do my best to uh, try and do this without taking the wheels off, just to show people how you can do it without having to really jack the truck up. But I also went with the 5100s for the front, and I went ahead and got a 5100 steering stabilizer. I'm going to swap that out, uh, mostly so they'll match. So uh, we'll see how this goes. So we're here on the driver's side and uh, you got a 15 millimeter nut on top. And I kind of already know what I'm gonna get into here, but so you'll go to loosen that. And you'll see it'll just turn the whole shock because this is all bound up with these nasty cruddy threads. So the top of this actually has two flat spots on it. So if you can get a set of locking pliers on it, enough no. and then you can hopefully hold it enough to turn the nut now I've been spraying these down over the last few weeks with some PB blaster so it may be helping me hopefully it comes all the way off
once you get to that point, it's just a matter of getting the bottom bolt out. So the bottom bolt is basically just like the ones in the back. It's 21 millimeter on each side. Super easy to get to, so I don't need to video doing that. The uh, Now let's see if we can actually get this thing out of here. out the bottom real easy now your new shocks will come with this little uh, retainer to keep this clip on and then they have these hardware packets that have bushings and a new top nut so, little lock nut there of course Probably a different size. Not a big deal, I don't guess. I'd say that that really doesn't matter which way it goes. But you just put the put that on there, and then feed the strut up or the shock up from the bottom, just like the other one. And you can just set the bottom of the new shock on the control arm so it doesn't fall out until you can get your hardware seated. Let me go see what size this nut is. like Bill Steen sends a 17 to replace this with. Push this up. Seat that on there. Start that. So that's got the top pretty much started. And then go set your bottom back in. Okay, so one thing, if you're doing this on the ground without jacking the vehicle up, if you had this raised up, this would be drooped down farther and this bolt would line up here a lot easier. As it stands, I'm trying to push this up so I can get the bolt in here. So what I do is I take a punch, I'll get the hole lined up when I have two hands free. On this side, use that to align my bolt hole and then slide the bolt in from the other side and then pushes the punch out when I get it done. So I uh, couldn't get the camera set up to where I could show you that, but that's basically what I'm gonna do. Okay, so turns out I was wrong. It's easier, just jack the truck up some. You don't even have to get it completely off the ground. I'm still on the ramps down here. That hole will just almost line up on its own and then you can get the bolt in. So again, we're back to the top here. Again, we have a flat spotted top. Uh, we get your wrench on first, which leaves very little to get a hold of, but you don't need much for this first part. And you're just going to start snugging the top nut down.
get your locking pliers on your threads. Don't want to mess those up. Here, we have to take these off. And there you go. Front strut installed. Or shock, actually, not a strut. Okay, so the next part of this, pretty tight quarters, so I can't really get the camera in here to show you while I'm doing it, but basically I'm gonna take this steering stabilizer out. I've got a 18 millimeter bolt and nut on this side, and then an 18 millimeter nut on here. This is a tapered fitting, kind of like a, a ball joint or a, a tie rod in or something like that. So I'll take the take that nut off of there and probably have to tap that with a hammer or something to get it loose, maybe. Uh, basically we're gonna take this out, replace it with the Bilstein version and button it up. As you can see, the bolt on the left-hand side, the driver's side, came out real easy. I took my little hammer there and was trying to knock the uh, tapered fitting loose and didn't work. So I got the old fire lube out and uh, tried warming up the drag link or tie rod, whatever they want to call that thing. And uh, be careful not to burn any of your harnesses or anything. I, in fact, I even kind of set the rubber on fire there. And after setting for a few seconds, I used the pry bar and it fell right out. New shocks and steering stabilizer installed. Had to address the tunes. Well, actually this was done before I did the shocks and stabilizer, but this truck needed serious help with the radio. All the speakers were blown out and I had all the leftover equipment from a previous vehicle. So I pulled the seat out. Uh, I bought a prefab box, actually fits a Super Duty that holds two eight inch subwoofers and a ported enclosure. And uh, looked like it would fit almost perfect right behind the seats, which it did but I did have to make some feet to hold it up. So you can see here, I'm kind of making a template to cut a piece of wood. The uh, woofers will be down firing instead of forward firing, which allowed me to put in a, a deeper woofer, something that handled a little more power than what would normally be done behind the seat of a regular cab pickup truck. Made a uh, leg for the other side, just a real quick template. They're quick and dirty. You can't really see them anyway once they're behind the seat. Took the uh, cardboard templates that I made, had a scrap piece of plywood, again, quick and dirty, buzzed them out with a jigsaw, sprayed them with some black spray paint, and screwed them to the side of the box. With the support legs attached, it was time to get some power wire in there. I didn't want to use those terminal cups on the front as they would be squished right behind the seats. So I drilled a hole in the bottom, ran a piece of heavier gauge speaker wire in, test fitted the woofers. I used a uh, Memphis Mojo 8 inch woofer uh, in this particular box that worked pretty good. I did pre-drill all the holes and took a few minutes to work around the gaskets and get them wired up. I wired these up for a 4 ohm load. I'm using an old Rockford Fosgate amplifier that works well with 4 ohms. The uh, most challenging part was actually just the pre-drilling. The heavy-duty gasket on the Memphis woofer uh, makes it a little bit difficult to hold out of the way while you put a drill in there. So it was drill and screw and fastened and finally got the woofers mounted in the box and set it in the truck. Actually, there were some things that needed to be done before I could put the box in. I actually had to wire up the amplifiers. So here I'm cleaning up under the carpet a little bit, kind of getting a plan to lay out. I ran two runs of four gauge, one for the two channel for the subwoofer and one for a four channel for the front end. Um, had some RCAs left over again from a previous vehicle. Ran those through and laid them out so they wouldn't get pinched or clamped under a seat. Had to run a remote wire and so on. For those that aren't real familiar with aftermarket car audio, the ground wire for your amplifier is as much or more important than what the power wire is used. Uh, in this case, I ran two separate grounds. Typically, you would try to ground them to the same point, but in this case, it wasn't that imperative. I uh, ground the floor down to bare metal there in the back of the cab wall, used two quarter 20 nut certs, some washers and some bolts, and made a really sturdy, strong, clean ground for each amplifier. And then I could mount the box back inside. 
I had previously installed the Kenwood double din head unit and the MB Quart components. Again, the components left over from a previous build. You can see the tweeters there on the driver's pillar. I wanted to add a separate subwoofer level control that was independent of the ones on the radio. Uh, I had an old hardwired knob that I mounted into one of the blanks just to the right of the radio. And I also wired up a switch to where I could turn on the radio or the stereo system without having to turn the key on. From here, it was just a matter of getting the head unit put back in the dash, uh, tying up any extra cables. There was some extra length in the RCAs I didn't need, so that had to be addressed there behind the glove box. Uh, connect the amplifiers with power, ground, remote, RCA inputs, speaker outputs, and so on. Uh, reinstall the seat, set the gains, things like that. You would do with the normal aftermarket stereo, and then enjoy the upgraded audio. With everything set and ready, this thing actually has a tremendous amount of output, more than you would expect out of a regular cab truck. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and if you want to know about more videos, hit that bell.